This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. So how about this for a long-term position? Two hours. That's the world of high-frequency trading. Here to tell us more about it and how it affects your investments, Alfred Barkley. He is the chairman of Pipeline Trading. He's also the former head of the NASDAQ. Al, it's good to have you with us. Thanks for coming in. Glad to be here. Um, as an expert in the world of what goes on in trading, both electronic and uh, all other kinds of forms, what is high-frequency trading? Well, high-frequency trading is where the markets have uh, evolved to, given the intersection of trading and high-speed communications and high-speed computers. So people have written rules that would normally be executed in a human being's brain into the computer, and they trade at very high frequencies, because high speeds, because the computers and the communications lines allow them to. So it could be something as, uh, as, as basic as, you know, when something reaches a certain price, go and buy or go and sell That's right. X number of shares of whatever it is. So that's the kind of order an individual might put in instructions into their online brokerage firm. A high frequency trading firm is actually not so interested in buying the stock to hold it and have the management create value. They're looking for temporary imbalances in supply and demand, fleeting, uh, sometimes nanoseconds, where they can uh, see that there's an imbalance that more people want to buy than sell, try to buy the stock up much the way a scalper would at the ball game, and come back and sell it to people who have a demand for it at a higher price. Now, is there anything necessarily wrong with high frequency trading? I mean, it just does it generate uh, more profits, let's say, for the exchanges? Well, it certainly de generates profits for the exchanges. There's nothing wrong with it in a legal sense because that's the way the regulations of our market work. We allow enough information to leak in our markets to enable this uh, calculation of a statistical probability as to whether there's more buyers than sellers. It's also a necessary function in the sense that when someone like a mutual fund wants to sell a stock, they want somebody on the other side to buy it. So it's a question of degree, Pam. It's not, these are not goods and bads. These are balancing acts. They're tipping points. And the question that's aroused everybody now is, is there so much high frequency trading that the true citizen saver whose 401k is coming to market through a large mutual fund or an investment advisor, are they being disadvantaged? And when you say when you say there's a lot of high frequency trading, I mean, is there a number associated with the, the, how much this, this takes up in the market? Yes, Larry Tab, who does a very sensible, responsible job of estimating these sorts of things, put out a report recently that estimates about 73 percent of all the trades are high frequency trades, and interestingly, they're done by about two percent of the people who trade in the market. So about 70 percent, more than 70 percent of all the trades that are done are done by about two percent of the participants. That's right, and they, these are high frequency trading firms that are spending a lot of money to be very fast, to be very smart. They're providing liquidity, but they're also taking out what some people think are excess profits from the mutual funds, investment advisors, pension funds that ordinary Americans count on. What do you think? I think we have set up a market structure that is uh, too much in favor of speculation versus investor. These are balancing acts. And, and I happen to have built a business around trying to serve what's now the ironically underserved mutual fund part of the market, the investment advisor part of the market, uh, where our systems are in the business of hiding their orders from predatory front running and, and high frequency trading. All right, so you want to be able to be able to offer people these systems that would allow them to do their trades without having to sort of get sucked into the whole world of high frequency trading. W what we're trying to do is to let them harvest the liquidity that the high frequency trading firms provide without being seen in front run. We're trying to turn the predator, turn the prey into the predator. And is that because, I mean, everybody gets to see the prices anyway because everyone gets best execution? Everybody gets to see the prices, and, and uh, ex best execution is an admirable goal. And uh, our, <laughs> a goal, I like that. So then in, in that case, what kinds of changes or what kinds of modifications uh, would you recommend to the marketplace? Well, the recommendation that and we've actually had a lot of conversations with regulators about this because they're actively looking at the issue as they, as they do periodically. These are balancing acts that change over time. And uh, I actually think they're doing quite a responsible job of gathering facts on both sides of the issue now. But uh, our way of innovating is to let uh, companies like ourselves put our money at risk trying to find the right solution. To, in other words, to have innovative free market solutions rather than regulatory solutions. Uh, sometimes the regulators think the situation is so, uh, so damaging to the public that they change the rules of the road. We think we can change the rules of engagement between human beings in our market structure and develop a, 
an offering that will attract mutual funds and other investors and give them a way to interact with high frequency traders where we've changed the locus of control to the investor. How right would you, what, what would be an example? How would you be able to do that? Or what, what would you like to see happen? Well, one of the innovations that we offer now is a very sophisticated system. And technically, it's Bayesian learning and neural nets and all the jargon of uh, quantitative training. But uh, what we do is we predict when you're being caught up in a uh, high-frequency trading trap, and we move you to either a different algorithm, a different strategy, because there are five or six separate strategies in families of algorithms serving them, or a different trading venue. So it looks like you finished your order and you're gone. And when that happens, the stock will generally what's called revert to where the price ought to be, given a normal supply and demand equation, not a temporary imbalance. So let's say you're buying, the stock will revert down to where it ought to be, because you've left where the pattern recognition software would have picked you up. And so we, we're able to uh, actually improve trading costs about 40%. Uh, by 40 percent. So, in, so in other words, what happens is you're able to uh, to sort of push uh, push the the high frequency trader uh, trading market away from the markets that you're serving. Well, we actually I would, we don't push anybody, but we we flee them. You flee them. Uh, yes, electronically we jump from location to location. We've taken the fragmentation that everybody complains of in the market and made it our ally and made it our customer's ally. There are lots of places to hide and harvest liquidity. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing your, your insight into what's going on in the world of high-frequency trader as well as where the liquidity is going. Uh, Al Barkley is the chairman of Pipeline Trading, former head of the NASDAQ. Always a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much. Thanks.